Welcome to our course, God and the Sacred Encountering a New Cosmology. This course explores the emerging core theological themes that arrive in the 21st century's current golden age of discovery in astronomy, astrophysics, earth sciences, and more. This course is not an overview of this golden age, I should say from the start. It is, however, a deep recognition that the theological themes raised by our current historical locus must take interdisciplinary matters of science and faith seriously. And why wouldn't we? Just recently, we discovered, for instance, we discovered as a species a galaxy known as IC1101, which is the largest known galaxy in the expanse of the universe itself and which is situated at the Abel 2029 galactic cluster. Now, I won't go into all of that here, but suffice it to say that IC101 is a massive elliptical galaxy, otherwise known as one of the supergiant ellipticals. It's about 1.07 billion light years away in the constellation of Serpens. Now, consider this for a moment by way of example. One light year is approximately light traveling at 186,000 miles a second for one year. That equals one light year. To give you a sense of our limited human capacity right now to travel that distance, if we were to travel to the closest galaxy to us at this moment and at our current fastest rate imaginable for us, it would currently take us 50,000 years to travel the distance of four light years. But back to IC1101. This particular galaxy is 5.5 million light years in diameter. We're talking about the galaxy itself. It's 5.5 million light years in diameter, making it the largest galaxy in terms of breadth as of 2010. It's about 50 times the size and 2,000 times more massive than our own Milky Way galaxy. It has by way of further example, about 100 trillion stars in that one galaxy, compared to roughly a mere 100 to 200 billion stars in our own galaxy. Now, of course, our galaxy is no slouch. We reside in a galaxy, you and me, all of us together in the Milky Way. It's about 7,000 light years deep, about 125,000 light years across lengthwise, and about 50,000 light years or more across at its closest width. Now, why does all of this matter? Does it matter that we can rattle off numbers like this together? Maybe not. The point is that we take it seriously because the discoveries are so immense and inspiring in our time right now all around us. Because in a golden age of discovery, we know quantitatively more, much more, and this new age or epic for us is not merely limited to advances in astronomy. No, we see advances in information technology, astronomy, neurology, the earth sciences, geology, paleontology, astrophysics, quantum physics, and an artificial intelligence. Our age is referred to as the information age, but that's not quite right. In truth, even with all of the turmoil and tribulation that you and I see and experience in the world today, and it is significant, we are still emerging in the midst of all of that turmoil, new methods for curing numerous cancers. We can take photos of globular clusters and galaxies that are impressive by their precision and beauty. We're advancing as a species in multiple fields at once, all at once. And paradigmatic change of this magnitude is changing the way that human beings reimagine our station, our place in the cosmos. Now, what does all of this discovery mean? Well, in an age of discovery, it comes with a certain commensurate level of psychosocial upheaval, social and existential anxiety and unrest, and a kind of objectless fear we often refer to as dread itself. Discovery creates cognitive and emotional dissonance because all of these authorities that you and I took for granted, be they moral or legal or familial or societal, the mores or customs we took for fact, all of these are indeed less stable. New discoveries call into question our former ways of being in the world. 
for instance, we used to see a universe and our place in it as three-tiered, the heavens, the earth, and that which was below the earth. Or vast quarters of the human population used to think of life between the dualities of good and evil. And in both of these cases, science has assisted us in evolving our thinking beyond a three-tiered universe and the study, for instance, of moral calamity, the likes of the Holocaust or other genocidal forms that have enabled us to develop serious theories of the human psyche and the sociological features of fascism or other ideologies that uh, lead to murder and maiming of other human beings. The change we are encountering in the world, beyond the traditional and historical, the mores we took as fact, are so significant and simultaneous that we refer to this time as a cosmological change in scope. That is to say, when so many of the features we took for fact, like so many stars in the sky, when they abruptly shift in you, we are experiencing a cosmological shift. And that shift is the beginning premise of this course. We are in the midst of a new emerging cosmology. This emerging cosmology has implications for the theological questions that arise in its wake. And this is, in fact, the second premise of this course, which is to locate, that is, our understanding of God or the God's divinity itself within the human encounter of sacred mystery in the cosmos. If you're paying attention to the way this course is laid out, and as it is described in the syllabus, then you'll notice that our aim is a theological one with an exploration of this question. Here it is. What are the theological luminary points or inquiries that are emerging in this age? We will address many of these through the course itself. Make sure you are aware of the approach of this course. Sometimes what we want a course to be and what it is in the syllabus can be two different matters altogether. So please be clear from the start that this course is the challenge you are aiming for. Now, let's orientate ourselves a bit to the course. I encourage you to have the syllabus in front of you. I'm, I'm waiting for you to get to the syllabus. Take your time. In fact, if you'd like to pause here, if you need to, that'd be just fine. Do that, and I'll wait for you at this point, and we'll start again. Pause now. OK, let's start. The course, God and the Sacred Encountering a New Cosmology, is divided into eight modules. In module one, we address the challenge of this new cosmology, or naming the challenge in module one. In module two, we will assess the apparent cross-religious pattern of generosity that is attributed to divinity, that is the God or the gods, within human culture, primarily through a Christocentric or Christian-based lens, but not exclusively. In module three, we will assess the human response of gratitude to the aforementioned sense of divine generosity from module two. Now, having considered divine generosity and the human response of gratitude in module three, in module four, we will take a good look at the fact that despite generosity and human gratitude, human beings can often lead solitary and lonely lives. Module four, therefore, explores what we mean by divine revelation in the universe. That is the inbreaking of God into history. That's what we mean by revelation, to reveal how God is re revealed in history. And the fact that so many of us feel stranded, abandoned, or even disavowed all together. That sense of existential abandonment. In module five, we continue with an understanding of what's called the anthropic principle. That is the principle that the whole cosmos intended consciousness to arrive from the start of space time. And yet how humanity is also still haunted by the shadows of the lie as a violence as normative or delusions of power, which also takes up much in module five. In module six, we transition to this specific question, where is the divinity or sacred in the universe? We will discover unique but not uncomplimentary responses from our authors in this module. In module seven, we ask the crucial question of what human beings are meant to be in the universe. Do we belong here? We will study the fundamental question of our human purpose as a signature theological question for a postmodern age. 
And finally, in Module 8, I'll do my utmost to introduce to you readings that are courageous, visionary, and inclusive, and which inspire some of the same kind of our own response to this question, which is, what is my equally visionary, courageous, and inclusive response to the emerging cosmology today? That's Module 8. Now, here is how I suggest you approach each module. First, view my lecture. Second, read the readings assigned for each module. These are available in the main tags of the course, in the course pack you purchased or uploaded uh, where appropriate in the Canvas page. And third, in the bottom of each module, you will see the link for the online journal. This online journal is titled Stellar Observations. I really like this title because it is an online course. It's essential that you follow the directions throughout the course and within each module. Be careful to answer each module, each question that's asked of you in the Stellar Observation. I won't be responding to the group in the journal because experience teaches me that by doing so, I can hinder your own discovery alongside fellow students. But that said, I will be responding to each of you individually when I'm grading each stellar observation per module. So be certain to view the module, read the text, and craft your response to the stellar observation by the due date and no later. This course also has two papers. The first paper is due at the close of module four, and the second paper is due at the close of Module 8. And each paper asks you specific questions. You do not need to attempt any additional external research for this course in order to answer those questions. But that said, you do need to know these readings very well. And your paper needs to follow very closely the rubric for how the paper is graded. I always encourage my students to look to the orientation page of this course. Directly under where you found this video, there's a document titled, How to Write a Stellar Paper. If you want to know how I grade paper construction and content, all of my students will tell you, this document will show you how to do it. Please, do yourself a favor now and write your paper according to this level of excellence as framed in the How to Write a Stellar Paper document, which I'm providing for you here in the orientation section. And while you're at it, familiarize yourself with the whole course. In the orientation documents I've provided an introduction so we can get to know one another. I've included a Prezi presentation on what religious communities around the world are saying will be the essential strengths necessary for the coming generation of religious leadership. I've provided you with a clear indication of our course learning outcomes in other documents. And I've also provided, well, a creative document on the eight convictions I have about you in this course. These are based on years of teaching and the aspirations I have for my students as they start and complete a course with me. Finally, on the evening of August 4th at 7 p.m., we will meet in Hunthausen Hall at the Seattle University campus. I've been assured by faculty colleagues in the sciences that they will assist us in using the telescopic array at the top of Bannon Hall on campus. I'll provide pizza and drinks. We'll use this as a proper excuse, if you will, for meeting and discussing what we're learning in the course together as well. And then, after sunset, we'll go to Bannon Hall and we'll peer through the telescope together. You have read already in the syllabus that we would have one evening together, and this is the one. August 4th, 7 p.m. in Hunthausen Hall on the Seattle University campus. When you have questions, Look to the information on the syllabus and send me an email. If you call me, this too will be sent directly through my email. I want to be in conversation with you where questions arise. And in an online course, the best course of action is to reach out to me as your professor if you have any questions earlier on than later. Let me say at last, I'm so pleased you're in this course, all of you together. If you allow it, you will experience significant discovery ahead. I look forward to seeing you.